Adam Skinner and welcome to Room 101. Exploring a world of woe tonight are This Is England, Vicky McClure, This Is Denmark, Sandy Toxvig, and This Is Devon, Josh Whittaker. <laughs> Okay, what's winding up Josh? <laughs> so, this is uh, people being rude about Paul McCartney. Top of the list, uh, your production team, seemingly, with that picture. <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> it looks like there should be a dog's tail above that mouth. <laughs> Feel sick now? <laughs> um, yeah, I feel quite strongly about this. It seems to have been a thing that's kind of happened in the last decade that being half of the greatest songwriting partnership of all time, changing the face of popular music, changing the face of society, doesn't deem respect if you're a bit of a square 74 year old. Mm. <laughs> like, he's 74. We're lucky he's not doing an advert for walk-in baths. <laughs> Do you listen to his um, more recent solo albums? No, of course not. <laughs> Hold but... it. Is, you, is this a person being rude about Paul McCartney? <laughs> <laughs> right, I, I thought this might happen. I've, I've made a list of the pros and cons of Paul McCartney. <laughs> wow. OK, so this is basically how the argument goes. So, the pros... He was responsible for changing popular music forever. He wrote Hey Jude. He invented the concept album. He produced the greatest Glastonbury headline set ever while in his 60s. He wrote Blackbird. The frog chorus was quite good. He took a, de <laughs> 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 he he took a pros, decade though. of public abuse. He headlined Live Aid. He made it okay to be a vegetarian. He wrote Hell to Scale to Fall on the Hill, paperback writer Michelle, Eleanor Rigby for no one, and let it be. Cons, he dyes his hair. <laughs> I think Paul McCartney has achieved so much at such a young age that he should have a free pass to do whatever he wants. Isn't Bard Kingdom Brunel? When he was old, no one was going, yeah, but what bridges has he built recently? <laughs> you know, Alexander Fleming, no one said, but what did he follow penicillin with? <laughs> Abraham Lincoln, no one said, what did he do good after whatever it was that he was meant to have done? <laughs> <laughs> And I'd say Paul McCartney is up there with the greatest people that has ever lived and people are rude about him and they shouldn't be. But nobody criticises him for Eleanor Rigby or for all the early stuff. They criticise him for giving the evil eye to burgers. I mean, it's fine if he wants to be a vegetarian, just the rest of us are doing a public service by eating cows and keeping them off the road. So... <laughs> <laughs> Think of the accidents there could be if I wasn't doing my bit keeping the livestock back. <laughs> So you don't observe Meat Free Mondays? What is Earth? Is that from Denmark, darling? What on earth is that? This was his little blurb for it. Please just log in pledge.meatfreemondays or one word dot com. Pledge.meatfreemondays.com. 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 You can do it right now, please. Wow! <laughs> It's definitely not as good as his early work. <laughs> See, you say that's bad. Yeah. The first time I heard that, that was in my head for a week. <laughs> Have you met him? No, I'd love to meet him. I saw him at this thing and I went over and he went, oh, hello, Frank. And I thought, ah, he knows my name. And then he said to his fiancée, this is a very famous British comedian and... I can't tell you how good I felt. <laughs> and I was so pleased. And then someone went past with a tray of um, little bits of food and I took a small burger off it and went like that and he went... <laughs> <laughs> and I tried to put it back on that they're gone. <laughs> I, I ended up... I held... You know when you're behind the bike shed having a smoke and the teacher... I held the burger behind my back, like that, <laughs> hoping that he might have forgotten about it. <laughs> Do you, do you like this stuff? Think, do you like Yeah, stuff? I mean, I loved the Beatles. We were at the Anime Awards and he was there. And my partner is a massive Beatles fan, so I was like, you've got to tap him when he comes past. And he did stop and say hello, but that was about it. <laughs> I'm a bit disappointed that this has become me coming on to talk about how much I love Paul McCartney and then just hearing stories about how everyone else has met Paul McCartney. <laughs> <laughs> there are some amazing Paul McCartney lookalikes around. Look at this woman. Look at this woman. <laughs> God bless 
<laughs> Can I say God bless her? I do not mock this um, this lovely old lady in, in her She's little so uh, Welsh home. But um, it has to be said that she does have more than a passing <laughs> resemblance. They I certainly think... share a hairdresser, I think. That's yeah. fantastic. And what about this woman? <laughs> <laughs> that think... is him! Wow! <laughs> He's allowed to relax <laughs> if he wants to. What do you Google if you want to find people who look astonishingly like Paul McCartney? Is exactly that. that. Just that. <laughs> <laughs> it's so too sandy. Yeah, pointless things you learn at school. <laughs> I have got... Yeah. <laughs> so, let's well, start with uh, mathematics, OK? So, I spent many, many hours of my youth learning about something called logarithms. Now, we didn't understand what they were for. They seemed to me entirely pointless. Uh, and the very day that I finally understood what they were about, we moved on and did something else. <laughs> and they've never come up again <laughs> in my entire life. So, uh, not just uh, the intellectual stuff that I think is a waste of space in my brain. Um, I know, for example, how an oxbow lake is formed. Who cares? Um, <laughs> it was physical education. They used to strip us down to our underwear and make us try and do a forward roll. Now, I think... <laughs> <okay. laughs> I am never going to throw myself off a train at high speed and suddenly... <laughs> The forward roll, I have to say, is still a, a great way to arrive in a tent. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's my personal favourite, but I was asked to do one on a TV show about two years ago. I hadn't done one for 40 years, but they said, can you do a forward roll? And I said, yes, because <laughs> I could remember doing one. <laughs> um, so I did it with tremendous confidence and gusto. And I honestly felt like I'd fallen out of a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> I do cartwheel occasionally, if, if, if the lift doors are beginning to close. <laughs> I have to say, my father was brilliant about all these things because uh, he was a, a very patient man and I was struggling with some French one day. And he said, yes, yes, funny thing, French. He said, in French, cheval means horse. And it's like that all the way through. They have a different word for each one of ours. It's very annoying. <laughs> 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 in art class, so I, I can't really draw, the, I, the only tip I remember was they teaching us to draw faces and they mm. said, um, start with the eyes and always remember the eyes are halfway down the head. And that's, well, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, yeah, of course they are. That's why I have my glasses on under my ears. Like, <laughs> like, we're not 50% forehead. Like, you speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? <laughs> the worst thing about that, I started saying it. For the last 30 seconds, I've been thinking I can't even look at Frank. <laughs> there is a professor from Newcastle University who says there is no longer any point in teaching how to spell because in the age of spell check and predictive text, it's a completely pointless oh, skill. Depressing. That's not true, though, Danny, because predictive text can be unpredictable and therefore you need to make sure it's right, you know? Well, I had. I was, I was trying to write, um, for some reason I won't go into, a text <laughs> message which included um, the name Nostradamus. <laughs> and I, sp I spelt it wrongly and it offered me um, nostril. <laughs> and you'd think predictive text would have some respect for Nostradamus. <laughs> the godfather <laughs> of all predictivity. <laughs> Do you know, so I've um, went to get uh, you get have to get a birth certificate done. We've just had a baby, and um, <coughs> her middle name is Virginia. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> and you'd think the one thing that you could do if you're a registrar is spell. So she turns the birth certificate around, and it says vagina. <laughs> <laughs> But I was so embarrassed. No, she's still got that name. No, no, no. I, I... <laughs> <laughs> we can change it. The worst thing is her first name's Franny. She got that. <laughs> <laughs> there must be some things you learn from school. 
Yes, of course. I mean, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was quite useful to learn to read. Um... <laughs> it seemed like every science lesson I was learning to use a Bunsen burner. Uh, <laughs> mm. Not a skill that has come up once in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Comes around, you want a cup of tea? I'll just pop on the Bunsen burner. <laughs> Blue flame, I'm not an yeah. idiot. <laughs> <laughs> All I've done, the songs. orange flame. All you yeah. did with the orange flame, one use. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you do. Tiny piece of copper, big yeah. tongs, goggles on. <laughs> the only problem we'd use in science was we'd be dispatched into the car park with a wheel on a stick. <laughs> and we'd just walk around clicking for hours. I just go, I don't would, know what I'm learning here. Would you like to relive that moment? Oh. <laughs> Is this going to come up in the exam? How big's the car park? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's satisfying, oh, though, isn't, isn't, it? It? <laughs> isn't it? Do you know what? Oh, that, I'm, wow. I'm back. It's 1993 again. Oh. Wait for it. Oh. 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 <laughs> Sounds like I've got a bad knee. <laughs> Oh. Okay, that is weirdly satisfying. Yeah, it is, yeah. isn't it? It's great if you don't want the responsibility of a real pet. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what you should have? You should have that with a hamster in it. Oh, that's good. And then oh, wow. you can go and just go take my hamster for a walk. <laughs> Mom. It is the precise method that the, um, the American pioneers used on the wagon wheels as they went across to try and work out how many miles they'd travelled. Is that right? Mm. Yeah. And did they click? Uh, I, I, I they believe... got on, but I wouldn't say they. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and so to Vicky. Leaflets in hotel rooms. Mm. I live in hotels quite a lot because you know I live in Nottingham, which is miles away from London, mm. and. You go into the room, you go to put your bag down, and you can't see the table for, you know, the trips to here and there. You just need a bed and your telly, done. Sparse. There we go. <laughs> keep, it, keep it simple. Then there's even phones now. There's these weird things where you go in and they're like mobile phones just in a port. Oh, yes. Uh, does that operate the television? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Yeah. Here am I thinking, Nottingham? Are they still going? <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look at um, some leaflets from hotel rooms. Oh, yeah. Some of them are a little disturbing. <laughs> wow. 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 Um, at first I thought, why has she got a vest on in the shower? Yeah. That is... What is the point That's... of that leaflet, though? Well, it says showering, just got a whole lot more fun. That looks like one of those things you might have on your door. door. Yeah. Is that the third option? <laughs> Leave me alone, so... tidy my room, or shower me in fun. <laughs> I have one which I find even more unnerving. Oh. <laughs> oh. Wow. wow. There is a man getting his money's worth from the free Wi-Fi, I would say. <laughs> Look at his face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he's, he's gelled for the... Um... For the event. <laughs> God, I hope he's gel. <laughs> <laughs> Do not disturb favor de no molestar. <laughs> I'm hoping that's a translation of Do not disturb. <laughs> and, uh, and not, not the hotel slogan, special favors for molesters. <laughs> I'll tell you what I hate when you have to phone down for the Wi Fi code. Oh. The way they kind of smugly reply to you, like, there, there's an element they're going, we know what you're up to. <laughs> and I'm not 10% of the time, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> what about... This is, um, this is a sign on, on a, a hotel lift. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even understand what that... <laughs> What, what else could it possibly mean? <laughs> what is after hours ass? There's only one way to find out, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, yeah I, there's no, of... If you're not pressing that out of yeah. curiosity, yeah. Yeah, you but... need to have a long, hard look at yourself. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to be woken up at three o'clock by someone leading a donkey into your room. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you do. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, the, it is a nightmare, the, uh, the leaflets thing, I must admit. I agree we are taught pointless things, but one of my favourite things is pointless knowledge of, of Bear in all mind that kind. Sandy's talking about pointless things being taught and she is the presenter of QI. Yeah, those things are not pointless. <laughs> <laughs> So I think it's about time this wrong was righted. I am going to put people who are rude about Paul McCartney into Room 101. Yes! Yes! <laughs> OK. What's making Josh angry? Right. Bring it on. <laughs> this, I truly believe. I spent my teenage years teaching myself to like the taste of lager so that I could be considered one of the boys. <laughs> I managed it. I've been fine with that, even though we all know none of us actually like the taste. <laughs> now they've brought along this worst drink called real ale. If you see... <laughs> Awful, right? These people who drink real ale, they act like they act like they're better than you, Frank. They act like they're better than mm. you. They'll go, oh, it tastes so much, so good. No one is drinking alcohol for the taste. No, you know, otherwise you wouldn't keep drinking it. Like, I like the taste of milk. I'd stop after one glass. <laughs> you don't find me at two a.m. eight pints of milk down. <laughs> There's got to be another dairy somewhere, hasn't there? <laughs> and you, I mean, you go and buy it, and you you have to queue behind them because they're sampling it, and then. They have to kind of... Have you seen them trying to push it out of the pump? They're like... <laughs> <laughs> it's like they're kind of slooshing a chemical toilet. <laughs> and you have to stand there and it, it looks like a canal. It might as well have a shopping trolley in it. <laughs> and they're acting like they're cooler than you. you wouldn't, you're not cooler than me because you drink real ale. James Bond wouldn't be as cool if when he was in the casino. The woman came over and said, well, can I get another drink, 007? Yeah, just a pint of Otter's Cock, please. Yeah. <laughs> that is one of my um, one of my problems with it. Is it's all slightly ironic, isn't it? It's all yeah. got comedy names and yeah. people go and have a pint of needless cruelty. <laughs> <laughs> it's in a pub called like the Uncertain Zebra. <laughs> it's like. You might as well go in and ask for a pint of mead. Like, <laughs> I didn't go to the pub to drink like Henry VIII. No. That's a good motto. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember in the, in the 80s, the first time, the first wave of, mm. of real ale. And then it was all about, you know, men in jumpers and big beards and stuff like that, drinking it. Yeah. But now I think it's become quite cool, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. I, I live in East London and it's full of people... You know, you'll go to the house and they'll go, do you want, do you want I've made some homebrew, do you want it? And you go, no. <laughs> oh, I'll have the one that passed EU safety standards. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, they're, they're, but they're, that's like the taste of some alcohol, the wonderful wines and whiskies. And yeah, I, I enjoy them, but... Is it all just about getting drunk? Life, yes. <laughs> 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 no, it's, it's, it's this kind of celebration of the of the drink that does taste worse, it's, you know, it, let's, let's be honest, it, do, it doesn't taste as good as a nice, cool, crisp lager. You go, no, you go to someone's house for a home brew and, oh, we mixed it, you know, I mixed it in my bath, but don't worry, I want oh. the bath first. <laughs> so that's not... I don't care. If, it's a bath. If you said, is this plate clean? Well, I washed it, but before that, I was sat on it naked. <laughs> <laughs> It's a confidence. Why do you think you can make beer? Like, I can't get the, you know, the ratios of Ribena right. <laughs> <laughs> At least that's not going to send me blind if I get it wrong. <laughs> I love that people are trying to do the old crafts themselves. I think that's a wonderful thing to make your own beer. I don't think I've ever tried a real ale, but I think you should be applauded for giving it a go, no? Well, come back to me <laughs> when you've tried a real ale and been unable to see for 48 hours. <laughs> <laughs> What about this? This is a bit of old footage from BBC Nationwide. And like, just listen out, by the way, to how much this man can drink. This, is, this takes me back. Alan Hunter, a man who can really hold his beer, whichever way you look at it. For nearly a year now, he's been defying the laws of specific gravity. 
Drinking beer the right way up his form is impressive. He's capable of sinking 32 pints in an evening. The only time he's ever tasted defeat was when he was beaten by two seconds over a five-pint sprint. But to be fair, on that occasion, his opponent was a horse. <laughs> when I saw him like that, it reminded me of your story of doing a forward roll. <laughs> <laughs> OK, to Vicky. <laughs> yeah, coat hangers. Mm. Yeah. One, the one thing that really bugs me is when you go into a shop, you've not even attempted to look at something and it's on the floor. Before you know it, you're doing a shift. You're there. Every time you touch something, <laughs> it's on the floor. Oh, yeah, don't get that up. They don't hang. They're no, just... What, why is that, though? I don't know. And then you've got... So, look at that. You've got, a, like, a variety of coat hangers. The velvet ones... Can't get your clothes off. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah, it's just the way it is. Also, the one thing that really annoys me is if you've like got a bit of a backlog, so you've got your bag of coat hangers and you think, oh, I'll just go and grab a coat hanger from the bag. No, it's like the whole thing comes out. <laughs> yeah. You start wrapping around, it's in your face. It's, you know, it's I've got a real problem. I think those them. are all very good points. They I are. if you look at a a coat hanger. Um, even my shoulders don't no. slope <laughs> yeah. to that degree. Why on earth did they make that you have to hang something on a slope? Yeah. With a normal one, I, when I hang my pants up to dry... <laughs> you know when you hang your pants up to dry? No. <laughs> I don't mean when you've washed them. <laughs> They will not look that everything is <laughs> they will the not and I've hand. ended up I've ended up putting pants on hangers um, like, like this yeah. And there's something very unnerving yeah. about <laughs> it coming through the flight It's like a very terrible scene from Peter Pan <laughs> <laughs> That didn't make the book wouldn't it make more sense if coat hangers were shaped like that? Yes. And then you'd have the, the proper shoulders. Try it with the pants. Look, these, th these were, it, they were born for pants. <laughs> <laughs> They're good. But it hangs. Absolutely. Yeah. Also, if it ever rains two-dimensionally... <laughs> <laughs> someone asks you directions in the street, do you know where the uh, <laughs> chemist is? I honestly think that is a more... Uh, it's way more practical, yeah. I agree. Somebody's going to steal that off you, you yeah. know that, I'm right? Yeah. I don't care. I've, God, I don't need any more money. <laughs> <laughs> I find it difficult to get the trouser balance right. Yeah. Yeah. Because the, the, the one side of the trouser is heavier than the other side it of the trouser. Off. It slips off. You need oh, yeah. staff. I need staff, <laughs> I know. There is, um, there is a... Have you seen these ones that stop trousers slipping off? So they've got, like, an extra... Oh. Plastic. Have you seen those? You look like Robin yeah. Hood. Yeah, well, that... <laughs> you can actually... I have, um, just for le leisure... <laughs> uh, it will actually... Uh, it oh, will... Um, watch yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and if you get that into the wardrobe door, you can hang a coat hanger. <laughs> yeah. OK, and so to Sandy. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, bar stools. <laughs> so what happens is, um, again, let us imagine that you're on a first date and you've dressed up and you look rather marvellous and, uh, and you walk into the bar thinking you look rather marvellous and you say, shall we meet to the bar for a drink? What a marvellous idea. And, and then the stool is here. <laughs> <laughs> now, we've already established I'm not a gymnast. I can't, uh, I can't leap onto the thing. So I try, I sort of casually... <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to sit, actually, I'm fine. I just sit and then, always, as I'm waiting, some woman who's fresh off a basketball court and seven foot tall um, comes to the bar stool next to me and just goes... Okay. <laughs> so I, I think... I, I don't even like the name of them, bar stools. It just sounds... <laughs> it sounds rude. Mm. Um, so I think they're... Yeah, I've never thought about Yeah, that. they're heightest. We should have a... We've got a bar stall oh, dear here. God. This, I think, is a fairly standard bar stall. Would you be happy with it? Yes, I, I mean, the thing is, uh, once you're on it as well, I don't know how you're supposed to look at it. I mean, just straight away, I'd have no idea how to... 
No, it does. I, I've never really... Um... <laughs> so I'd have to clutch the bar, I think, to start with. So I, I imagine I've arrived. I haven't had a drink yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness me, I'm anxious. Unless it's a bloody swivel one. Which is very... <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> At this precise... <laughs> At this precise moment, my date arrives. <laughs> and then you're on and you have a couple. Now you've got to get off again. <laughs> and that's a nightmare. <laughs> Do a leap. Now, the forward roll now would be very helpful. Oh, that would be impressive. <laughs> that would be cool, right? Yeah. Um, but they say, your table's ready. You think, OK. So, <laughs> you go ahead. I'm going to be... I'll just... Uh, I'm going to wipe the bar down for a little bit. <laughs> 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 Thank you, darling. That's <laughs> Five ten, yeah. and as you say, I dread any first date on one of these. Yeah. Because the thing is, when you slide off, which you do, your trousers ride up quite a bit, which you don't want on a first date, especially as I am. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I favour a garterette. <laughs> And it's something you want, you want them to find out maybe week yeah. two or three. <laughs> Are they real or painted on with Bovril? <laughs> <laughs> but it's not, I mean, have a good. Have no, a go. do, do, try, elegant, uh, do try, do try. You're Vicky. taller than me and you've oh. got heels. The thing is, they do make me nervous because. Oh, yeah. I, I'm not a fan of them, I, I have to agree. Oh. I find myself clutching the front. Yeah. So I'm, I look like I've been caught mid leap from. Oh, oh, oh. Sandy! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> we come to the end of that round. I. Real ale, I, I, I don't... I mean, really, I just want to put alcohol in, but that would be very unfair. Um, that, yeah, I'd, I'd fight against that. <laughs> oh, God, the, the Barstool's thing is very tempting because it, it's never occurred to me that if you're... Um, I'm not saying you're short, but if you're not tall, shall we say, <laughs> it's a, a, a problem. But coat hangers, they're badly designed. They're upside down, they're complicated, they're hostile. I'm going to put coat hangers into room one. That brings us to the end of the show. Well done, Josh. You were the most persuasive guest, so you are this week's winner. <laughs> Thanks very much, Josh Widdicombe, Sandy Toxvig, and Vicky McClure. And thank you. Good night.